Welcome to News Now from the Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Mike Crowley, and we are joined again by Lisa Gibellario with the Wayside Youth and Family Support Network and coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition. And this week we're talking about fire prevention. So fire alarms seem like a good place to start, Lisa. What do we need to know? Uh, an excellent place to start. Um, first of all, Mike, fire alarms should be installed in homes or apartments on every living level. So if you have three floors, you should have at least three fire alarms. They should be tested frequently every couple of months at least. And it's really easy to do. There's often a test button that you can just press and it will make the sound of the alarm. Um, and the batteries, I'm told, should be changed twice a year. And a good rule of thumb is to do that on the fall back in the fall um, when we change the clocks and on the spring ahead when we put the clocks forward. So that's a good way to remember to change um, the batteries. And the alarms themselves, the units themselves should be um, updated. Uh, new ones should be brought in about every 10 years. So what else is it important to do, Lisa? Well, if you have small children in the home, Mike, it's advised that you keep matches and lighters away from them, keep a close eye on them in the kitchen if they're near the stove, familiarize your children with the sound of the fire alarm and what to do if they hear it, um, and develop and practice an escape route plan. So Lisa, what might an escape plan look like? Um, well, first of all, you should identify, part of the plan would be identifying two exit routes out of the home. Um, it's really important um, that these exits be free and clear so that people can actually access them as exits. So no boxes in front of them, no furniture, no, you know, toy chests. Um, you should teach your children as part of the exit plan that smoke can be really incapacitating. Um, so if there is smoke to go low, to try to stay low because smoke will rise and just to proceed to those exits. And once outside, Mike, call 911 immediately and stay outside. And this plan should be practiced as well. Okay, anything else, Lisa? Yeah, just that with the holiday season upon us, you know, be careful with those menorahs, right? Because those are candles. Um, be careful about where you place a Christmas tree if you have one. It should be away from a fireplace, away from any burning candles. And a word on candles, never leave them unattended. Um, and always, if, you, if you're someone who likes to light a candle, keep it on a hard surface that is not flammable. So like a stone countertop is good. Um, same with fireplaces. Um, if you light a fire, don't leave that unattended. Be careful how you, you know, bank it and, and take care of it upon, you know, bedtime. Um, with regard to space heaters, it's certainly getting cold out there. Um, two points that I didn't know about space heaters. Um, one, that they should be plugged directly into a wall outlet, not onto an extension cord outlet. Um, and the other one, I guess, is we probably all do know is to be, you know, turn them off when you're going to sleep or obviously leaving the house. Um, I mentioned stoves and little ones. Kitchen fires are among the most common source of home fires. So be really mindful of not only what's on the stove, but what's next to the stove as far as pot holders or dish towels, they can catch fire um, and, you know, and little ones. And um, finally, teach your children that if, if, if the worst happens and they, there is any fire on their bodies, that the old adage stop, drop to the ground and roll is a good way to put out a small fire. Um, the fire department has a, a safety program, fire safe program, and they do education. They go into the schools, they go into the Beach Street Center. So just know that you have information on the fire department's website. And if you wanted to get, if you're in charge of a Girl Scout troop or Boy Scout troop, and you want to um, get the fire department to do some additional education, they are very willing to do that. Well, thank you, Lisa. Fire prevention awareness and planning, it's so important. And we will talk with you next time. Thank you, Mike.